Hey guys, welcome back. Got some new stuff going on. First of all, I hope everyone had a great New Year's Eve. They had an awesome party next door. I didn't get to go. I was all set to go. I was working here, did a video out back, and then I was getting my stuff together, made a bunch of hors d'oeuvres to take over, and then fireworks started going off here about seven o'clock. Wasn't sure, you know, it's the first year here how well early they were gonna start, but man, they started early. And let me tell you what, they can afford the good stuff here. Tons and tons of big shows. I mean, totally cool. Totally cool event on New Year's Eve and 4th of July. Those are the two days of the year when, man, go for it. Put on the big shows. But unfortunately, Chloe Bear really doesn't like fireworks, so. I stayed here with her. I was gonna go next door for an hour and enjoy the party and then come back, you know, when they were going off, but no, that wasn't in the cards. But that's okay, no big deal. And uh, the wife is still up in New York. She gets back in a couple days. So I've got some other cool news and I'm sure they'll see this before it goes up. My parents moved up their plans to move here near us uh, build a new house and that kind of good stuff. So they're coming for next week, staying here with us and jump starting that project. <sighs> and yes, as soon as the wife gets back, this Christmas crap has got to go. Really sick of looking at the stupid fake pine tree sitting in the freaking middle of the living room, but she won't allow me to touch it. So I can't take it down. I just want to throw it in the trash. Bunch of germs. Uh, let's see, other cool stuff. Oh, this just came in. So Amazon just came for the day and uh, I got a gift card for Christmas. So this is what I got with part of it. So I got the new sub in and of course it's massive. I mean, just huge. Now here's the thing, it doesn't have dedicated feet. The old sub had feet built into it and those uh, sorbethane pads work great for it. Put the pads right under the feet, kind of like the speakers here. These are like little rectangular feet, but you know, they, they still work okay. I, I think I want something different because these sorbethane pads work with better surface area. You can see that they're totally squished down. Now, I don't necessarily have a problem. These speakers are very stable and they don't sound coupled to the floor. But man, there is, there's almost no material left between the floor and the speaker. What I actually might do is cut these in half and kind of make slivers. I think that'll work just fine for the speakers. But these speakers are a lot lighter. I mean, they're heavy, but they're a lot lighter than this guy right here. So I'm, I'm about at the limit. This, I just have sitting directly on those pads. So they're just pancaked under this. The problem is when you do that, you don't get much leveling effect. And, you know, no floor, unless it's poured specifically level, is going to be perfectly level, especially close to a wall. What I have here is, this is actually sitting on three of them. This corner is up in the air. And I just, I just have it in my head. It may all be in my head, or it may not, that it's affecting it somehow. So... I want some better isolation pads. I want that to sit better on the floor, on all four corners, not have any kind of rock, but still have good isolation. So I bought some dedicated isolation feet that are just for the sub. They're from SVS, they're made for the product. These are the feet that come with the sub. They're hard rubber, they're not plastic. You know, they have a little bit of give, but they're made for carpet. These are not made for hardwood. This is to punch through the carpet, to sit on a something solid. And they thread into the sub. So I'll put these back on the sub. And what they should do is sit in the middle of these here. This, these are a combination of metal rings and basically really thick sort of thing, rubber type material. So let's take a look at these. So like I said, these are from SVS, makers of the sub, and it's just complete coincidence that they just happen to make really good isolation things, and it's complete coincidence that I have the SVS wireless system. I got that, you know, before I even had 
plans on getting this sub using it with the old Klipsch sub. But it just works absolutely fantastically. SVS is pumping out some good products. So this is a four pack of feet. They also have a six pack version. It was 50 bucks for four of them. So not terrible by any means. And then here we have the little puck assemblies. They're black on black. I've seen them also silver and black. This top part here is aluminum. That's what the sub sits against. So the stock feet will go in this divot here. And this bottom is rubber. It's obviously a lot thicker. The sort of thing pads I have there are about a quarter of this depth right here. So this is going to give a lot better leveling effect. Hopefully. We'll see. So alternatively, and the way I'm going to do it here, they give you three different size bolts. So you can directly bolt these to the bottom of the sub. That's what I'll do. A lot more material here. All right, so I've got to tip it on its side. I'll put a blanket down, tip it on its side, screw these on, put it back into place, and we'll give it a wiggle test. Hopefully it's level on the floor. And I'm sure it's gonna sound great. It sounds absolutely great now. It is decoupled to the floor. I don't have the room shaking. By the way, the whole point of decoupling it, getting the sub directly disconnected from the floor. If you were to put the sub directly on the floor with the feet or without the feet, anywhere that's rigidly mounted, anything that's rigidly mounted to the floor, what happens is the sound from your sub all that bass that it's generating vibrates through the floor. The floor actually amplifies some of the frequencies and you get tons of things rattling in the room. You get the walls shaking, you get pictures shaking, you get stuff in the cabinets shaking. That's not good, all right? That's not the sound making that happen. It's the fact that it's coupled to your physical house. That's not what you want. All you want is the audio from the speaker hitting you through the air, period. You don't want any physical vibration, so you want to decouple it. However you have to do it. I mean, there's tons of ways to do it. This is just a very nice, great looking, easy to install way of doing it. A really old school cheap way is to take two racquetballs, cut them in half, and you know, just put the, the half domes under it like feet, you know? Obviously that's ugly if you care about that, but it does pretty much the same thing. All right, that's basically all we're doing here. We're just putting a big chunk of rubber between the floor and the sub to isolate the vibration. That's it, the physical vibration. You don't, it actually helps the sound. It gets rid of the boominess and muddiness that would be created from that. Not that I have that now, okay? It's, the, the pads under it are completely taking care of that. But because I've got this rocking issue in this one corner, it's up in the air. You hear that? Sometimes I hear that because this thing moves. This is a huge, huge driver. Need to take care of that. So here you can see the massive difference in materials. <laughs> That's what I'm going between. You can see the thickness here in comparison. And this gets very squished down quite easily. I mean, it works as a damping material, but not as really a support structure. You can see it goes down to probably about a millimeter. And, and I couldn't get my finger underneath it whatsoever on the floor. I had to just kind of muscle it over to get a gap. So this, in comparison, much better for actually securing it. Okay, so let's see how we did here. Check for wobble. Nice. All right, so those have just enough give and they're big enough. It's actually floating on all four. That's not wobbling now. The whole thing is supported on all four, and it's got a jiggle. 
is completely suspended above the floor. That's what you want. You want this completely separated from the floor. And of course, you could use those really heavy duty, very expensive platforms, which are basically the same thing. It's things like this, floating dampers with dedicated platforms that you then place your equipment on. And they look fantastic, but they're hundreds or thousands of dollars. And they get even more sophisticated. You have multiple layers of floating, so you can have your stuff, you know, you could have an earthquake and nothing would affect it. That's overboard for my needs. So that's cool, that's done. Now I'm gonna slice these guys up and give my speakers some better support. Well, that's not really going to plan. <laughs> that wasn't me moving it, that was it sliding off. That's what keeps happening. When I stack them up and make them smaller, they deform. It's just too heavy a load for such a small area. I've tried two and three and it's not really making a difference. So for now, I'm just gonna take the discs I took off the sub and put a couple back there under the speaker and, and live with it. But in the future, I'll probably get a better speaker isolation support system for the main towers here. These are working fine for the center channel. Obviously it's much lighter and you can't see them. So they're not deforming, that's just doing its job. And like I said, these are doing their job, but they are quite compressed down in the corners. They work better on the older speakers because they had large round feet, but these little tiny contact patches of these clips feet are just punching right through. So, uh, you know, maybe I'll just use two full discs. That might help for now, but I, I don't like the way they look, especially with the plastic. And if I don't use the plastic, they really stick to the floor which I guess isn't so much an issue now, but if you need to move your speakers around or anything like I was doing when tuning, it's a pain in the ass with these because they are quite sticky on their own. And they will take off finish. You don't want to put it on paint like this. I've got the plastic underneath them on this one because they'll take your paint right off if you let them sit for too long. Or if you have any kind of really delicate floor, it's not really an issue here in this bamboo, but you'd want to protect any kind of finish. We'll figure something out in the future, but for now, I'm just going to stick these back. That's good enough. This was not planned. I just came over to look at the other speaker, and that confirms my theory of not enough surface area or not enough rigid material for the surface area. These clipped feet cut right through this one, starting at this front edge, just from the pressure. So, yep, these are not a viable solution for these speakers. Worked fine on the Polk, but not for these little tiny feet. You know, I just realized I'm taking something for granted. I'm assuming that these feet perform the same as the Polk did. Now the Polk feet were totally different. They were just basically large, rigid rubber discs. These are long, fairly skinny rectangles, but they're a much softer rubber. Now. I assumed that, you know, you would need the same kind of treatment, so I put the sorbethane under here. But I've never run these with just the Klipsch feet direct to the floor. Now, I'm also using base management, so everything below 80 is crossed over to the sub. That may mitigate the even need for them with these towers anyway. You know, we'll see. I'm going to do some critical listening here. And... See if I even need feet or if these or isolators or if these clips feet will simply do the job. If there's any kind of rattle, if there's any kind of weirdness with the mid base coupling or the image, I'm going to try it now with the sorbethane. And this is how I've got everything set up. So I know it sounds great. I'll take them off. If I notice any difference, then I'll have to look for something else. But if it's the same with or without, well, the clip feet are good enough. So let's get to listening.
Well, we're good without anything. These sound absolutely identical. No nuance difference whatsoever. These Klipsch feet are doing a better job than the Polk feet. I don't find any need for isolation with the towers, at least with base management on. If I didn't have base management and these towers were trying to reproduce everything below 80, and they go down to about 30, that may be different. Yes, I need to rehide my speaker cable. So, cool, that saved me some money, but definitely happy with the SVS sub isolators. They leveled and are doing a phenomenal job, just as the Sorba thing did. So if you've got a need for isolation, but don't have some weird shaped feet that'll cut through them, <laughs> I still recommend them. And like I said, they did a wonderful job with those polks for a long time. So question for you guys, would you like to see, I don't know how useful this is gonna be because it's gonna be pretty specific. There's gonna be some general information, but some very specific information. Would you like to see a very detailed setup of all the settings in this system? Because quite frankly, it is very complex between the settings in the TV, the settings in the receiver, and the settings in the Apple TV to get everything working correctly. It is very complex and you have to know what you're doing. I have stuff in here that you haven't seen. I have stuff in here that changed since what you did see happened because it's that complex. It's perfectly set up now, but it took a lot of trial and error and a lot of research. So if you want me to make the video, I'll do it. I will run through everything, set everything. I'll show you how to set and why everything needs to be like it is. But you know, if it's not something you guys care about, you know, I'm not going to take the time because it'll take me hours to do it. Anyway, let me know. But here's a little something I will share just because, man, did I get put through the ringer figuring this one out. Alexa, turn on the office fan. Okay, so I've had over the past couple weeks this fairly random problem of my processor just cooking itself. I mean, going 25, 30 degrees Celsius over normal. Both at idle and under load and it was driving me absolutely crazy so long story short it's an 8700k water cooled delitted which means i've <laughs> i've broken the seal on the actual chip i've taken the heat spreader the metal piece off the top to replace the crappy gunk that intel uses and i put on a very very thin layer of called liquid metal and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a very thin layer of liquid metal to contact between the actual silicon chip die and the heat spreader that then goes underneath the cooling system. And what that does is it drops the temps a good 20 degrees because it's that bad out of the box. Modern chips, the, the latest generation are soldered. They don't use the gunk so you don't need to do that anymore, or rather you can't do that anymore. But anyway, I did that a while ago. I mean, this chip has been running in here for months since before I moved. And it, this just started happening. So of course, the first thing I thought, well, did I somehow screw up the application? This isn't my first chip that I've deleted, but you know, shit happens. It was kind of weird that it started popping up after a couple months though. And just randomly, I mean, just sitting here, do 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 editing a video all normally with all, this is a highly overclocked system too. Um, it's, it's pushed to uh, 4.8 gigahertz on all cores. And when rendering with Premiere, normal temps would hover in the low 80s, okay? I could push it more and I can push it to five, but then it gets a little loud. I like it silent. You can hear how quiet it is. This is as loud as it gets, even under load. I value silence, okay? So I've got it set up to where the pump is running on high, but you can't hear it anyway. And the fans have a nice gentle fan curve. They'll come up just enough to keep it cool, but it doesn't get any louder than this. And the temps will hover in the low 80s. That's totally fine. I mean, that's not really hot, hot, hot. Way below the threshold of 
thermal throttling, throttling, you know, you don't have to worry about performance. But it sits there and, you know, I'm used to the temps and I can see on my temp display at all times, 31 degrees here at idle, what it's doing. And so one day I'm rendering a video and my fans come on, you know, and, and it's obvious because I can hear them. I'm like, what the hell? I look at my temp, 100 degrees. That's cooking. I mean, that's at the point where the system is now cranking the clock down to try to save itself. And sure enough, it, I mean, it was clocking down to into the three gigahertz range, trying to keep the temps down. It was still picking 100. Okay, something was physically wrong. So long story short, <laughs> I re-delitted it. <laughs> I used the best thermal paste out there. I had previously, in a, another guy's stuff video, you saw me run out to Best Buy because uh, I, I can't remember why. I think I needed to redo it or something. But anyway, I was out of paste, so I had to go to Best Buy. I got the marginal stuff they have, the Insignia brand. It's nothing special. It's just regular old thermal paste, but it worked. You know, it, it was like within a degree or two of using the best Arctic Silver 5. So it was fine. Well, I thought, okay, maybe that stuff is really crap and maybe it was breaking down. It's been a couple months. So I ordered Arctic Silver 5, which took days to come in. I don't know if there's like a global shortage or what, but it's crazy hard to get that stuff. It was impossible on Amazon. I had to get it from an eBay seller and I paid through the nose to do so. But I finally got it in. Let's see my yay YouTube play button there. Uh, finally got in a tube of Arctic Silver 5. Okay. Redid that. Boom, everything's back to normal. Yay, okay. So technically I didn't know which one it was. Was it a bad delitting job? Or was it the thermal paste? Well, it didn't matter, because a couple days later, it did it again. Now I'm really scratching my head. What the hell? Is it my cooler? So, okay, long story short, I'm, I'm eliminating everything, right? So I'm thinking, is it the physical cooler? Is it somehow breaking? I mean, the, it's not even a year old. Oh God, I can't do this with one hand. Stay, stay. So, oh. Hang on. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm, I'm loosening the screws one at a time on the cooler thinking, all right, well, you know, maybe it's pressuring and maybe there's something wrong on the motherboard. Maybe there's something wrong on the mount. It's a liquid cooler there. Great cooler, no problem with it. Everything's tight, man. So I remember way back in the day of my water cooling adventures, I would occasionally get an air bubble. Now I'd usually hear it, because usually, this is the pump here, there's a, there's a little pump inside there pushing fluid, the chip is right underneath it, it's a big copper plate, transfers the heat from the copper plate into the water inside here, being moved around by the pump, comes in one tube here, comes out the other, goes into a radiator, just like your car, and there are fans up underneath, pushing the air through it, hot air exiting out the top. So that's how the system's cooled, nice and quiet. You don't have any loud fan noise. So I'm thinking, well, you know, I have had air bubbles in the past. I mean, years ago, way like custom loop systems, but I would always hear it. You'd hear the, you know, the, like, a, like an aquarium pump kind of noise, cavitation. Well, I'm not hearing anything. So out of just screw it, there's nothing left to try. Flip the pump a few times, temps plummet. I mean, it was in like the mid fifties, just sitting here at idle. I'm at 1% just sitting here at idle, doing nothing. And it went from mid fifties, bam, down to 30 in three seconds. <laughs> it was a freaking air bubble. Freaking air bubble sitting somewhere in the pump here, right in the middle, right over the cores, right where the heat was trying to come through and transfer. That's it. So luckily, that's all it took. I have no idea why it happened. Again, completely randomly, just sitting here. I put it to sleep every night, so it does shut off every night. But, you know, obviously the radiator's above the cooling system. 
error shouldn't be transferring through at all, but it did. So <laughs> it just drove me crazy, but I was really happy to finally fix it. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. See you next time. Let me know if you want that tutorial. Be glad to do it if there's actually a need for it. See ya.